Does progesterone help if you've had a prior miscarriage? What should you do? Hi friends, today I'm talking about prior miscarriage and progesterone, and this can be a very complicated topic. Does progesterone prevent a miscarriage? The take home message is it probably matters on when you start it and your medical history, meaning universally, no, it doesn't help everybody. And we know this because clinically, the number one reason for a miscarriage is going to be a genetically abnormal embryo. And your body is supposed to miscarry that. So in this video, we're going to talk about quickly progesterone in the natural cycle, what happens when you get pregnant, but then specifically highlighting the articles and studies that have evaluated this question and then my take home. So we're going to go over this really quickly. First disclaimer, none of this is looking at IVF or embryo transfers, totally different cohort, totally different group. This is looking at natural conception. Secondarily, love you guys. If you want to support this channel, learn more about your body and your fertility, please hit subscribe. That helps spread our message to more people. I am Dr. Natalie Crawford, a board certified OBGYN and REI. I'm a fertility doctor and I talk about miscarriage all the time, every day. So first, real quick to understand these studies, we want to understand what happens in the menstrual cycle. I want you to imagine inside your ovary, you have a group of follicles available. Each follicle has an egg inside. In that month, the brain will send out follicle stimulating hormone or FSH. FSH is well named as it gets one follicle to grow. As that follicle grows, it makes estrogen. Estrogen grows the lining. Estrogen increases as that egg gets more mature. When the brain has seen a high enough estrogen for a long enough time, what will happen is it will trigger the LH surge from the brain and this will allow that follicle to rupture, the mature egg to ovulate, and then that follicle will reform into a corpus luteum. This corpus luteum is very important because what is now going to happen is in the entire luteal phase, you will have LH pulses from the brain causing this corpus luteum to make progesterone. It does make progesterone up and down just in relation to those LH pulses. And we know that because anywhere in the luteal phase, you can see progesterone levels from three to 40 nanograms and they're all sufficient and normal. So progesterone normally goes up and down throughout the entire luteal phase. If you are not pregnant, that corpus luteum can only live for 12 to 14 days. So then it dies, progesterone drops, and you get a period. It is that drop in progesterone that signals to your body to bleed. When you get pregnant, suddenly a pregnancy comes in, starts to implant, and it makes HCG. HCG is the pregnancy hormone that we detect on a pregnancy test. HCG rescues the corpus luteum. And what that means is now the corpus luteum can live longer than two weeks. HCG from the embryo doubles approximately every 48 hours in a normal pregnancy. So you now have a constant and increasing stimulus to this corpus luteum to make constant progesterone. So you have gone from fluctuations from LH pulses in the brain to a constant production. And this progesterone is crucial. One, the duration of exposure, opens and closes the implantation window. We know if you're taking progesterone every day in your cycle, you're not gonna be able to get pregnant. This is the premise of progesterone only birth control pills because you don't have that opening and closing of the implantation window, it's just closed. And progesterone is essential to maintain that early pregnancy. We also know this based on very old studies where if you took a corpus luteum out, I think these are monkey studies, the pregnancy miscarried. If you didn't give it progesterone because you need progesterone until the placenta takes over, which is around nine weeks. So in that time period from after ovulation until the placenta is fully functional, you are dependent on the corpus luteum for making progesterone. So when a pregnancy comes in implants and it's not normal and your HCG doesn't rise enough, it doesn't stimulate enough progesterone from the corpus luteum. Therefore, you have a drop and you miscarry. And this is one of the ways that our body acknowledges that you have an abnormal pregnancy to permit it miscarrying. Okay, on the flip end, I do and most people believe there are a subset of people who do not make enough progesterone. And this has been hard to test since progesterone does rise in the entire luteal phase. And that these people might be more predisposed to having miscarriage than other people. And potentially supplementing with progesterone in this group could it help? Because if one of the problems causing miscarriage is a bad corpus luteum or a luteal phase defect, 
maybe progesterone can help. And that is the question really that we're trying to get to in all these different studies. I've linked all these studies and the resources, but let's go through some of the top ones. So the first one is going to be a randomized control trial called the PROMISE trial. In general, the PROMISE trial is looking at people who have a history of unexplained miscarriage who are trying to conceive. Randomized into 400 milligrams of vaginal progesterone twice a day upon the confirmation of pregnancy. So the moment you had a positive pregnancy test. And then looked at the difference of live birth rates. Progesterone was taken vaginally from anywhere from when it was started between four to six weeks until 12 weeks when it was stopped. There were 836 patients who were randomized into two equal groups. Overall, the difference was a 65.8% pregnancy rate in the progesterone group and a 63.3% pregnancy rate in the placebo group. No statistical difference, even though those are slightly different numbers. However, when looked at the more miscarriages somebody had, everybody in this trial had at least three. The more you had, it looked like there was a greater difference between these groups showing some benefit with progesterone. A second trial was called the PRISM trial. Now the PRISM trial was a little bit different. This looked at people who had vaginal bleeding in a pregnancy. So it didn't matter what your history was. If you had a pregnancy that was less than 12 weeks and you presented with bleeding, you got randomized into 400 milligrams of vaginal progesterone twice a day or not. So this was a very large study of over 4,000 patients. So in this study, what we saw is that overall 75% live birth rate in the progesterone group, 72% in the placebo group. Because of how many people were in this group, this was actually a statistical difference. When you categorized it and looked at people who had a miscarriage, and they divided into one or two, three or more, that improvement got even bigger. So in people who had had at least one or they'd had two prior miscarriages, it was 75% versus 70% live birth rate. And if you had had three or more miscarriages and you had vaginal bleeding before 12 weeks and you were started on vaginal progesterone, your live birth rate was 72% in the progesterone group versus 57 in the placebo group. Quite a statistical difference showing largely there's probably a subset of people who this helped. Now, since then, there was even a smaller study and it's looking at the same question, prior miscarriage plus vaginal bleeding, but that was a very small group with only 130 patients in each arm and it didn't show a statistical difference probably because the number of patients was too small. There was a study that looked at this evidence cumulatively, and it does look like in people who've had a prior miscarriage, especially if you have vaginal bleeding in that early pregnancy, starting vaginal progesterone can be helpful with no risk or harm seen in either of these large studies. To get to the root of the question is how do we identify this population better when you don't have a test for luteal phase defect? There was a study looking at people who had a history of unexplained recurrent pregnancy loss. And in this study, 100 to 200 milligrams of vaginal progesterone twice a day was started three days after the ovulation surge, which this to me, if we think part of the problem might be early implantation, then starting progesterone earlier in the luteal phase is likely going to be more beneficial. And that is what this study showed. People who started vaginal progesterone three days after ovulation with a history of recurrent miscarriage had a 68% live birth rate versus a 51% in the group that was on placebo. The live birth rate for people who had vaginal progesterone started three days after ovulation was 68% versus 51% who were not on progesterone. And all of these women had a history of at least two or more prior miscarriages. Okay, so there is some conflicting data on here and it's probably just these very specific times. What is your medical history and when do you start the progesterone? I think that if you have vaginal bleeding, and especially if you have a history of a prior miscarriage, it's not wrong to start progesterone. Is it gonna prevent you from miscarrying? Maybe not, but maybe so if there could be some luteal issue and you're in the first trimester. Now, if you have a history of two or more losses, is there an argument to starting progesterone in the luteal phase? It does look like that is more beneficial than waiting to pregnancy, which is looking at this luteal start group versus the PROMISE trial, which just started on confirmation of pregnancy. So I think it really depends on your personal situation, 
Understanding this literature can be difficult, but history of prior miscarriage, starting progesterone luteally, likely is going to be the best preventative measure. And then if you have vaginal bleeding, especially in the history of prior miscarriage, starting as soon as you have the bleeding or you notice the pregnancy is probably better than not, understanding that data is mixed. All right, I know this is a complicated topic, so ask any of your questions in the comments. Always happy to help, and thank you guys so much for being here. As always, please subscribe. You can find more information on the As a Woman podcast or follow along on Instagram at Natalie Crawford, MD. Thanks, friends.